I was about to raise my hand anyway. Uh, hey, Coach Hope Oswell, thank you for your time um, today. Um, I just wanted to ask you, over the past few weeks, you've been praising the team's performances on Saturday due to the way they've been preparing Monday to, or Tuesday through Thursday or Tuesday through Friday at practice. Um, has it gotten to a point now, I'm sure you mentioned it in your meetings on Sunday, but has it gotten to the point now where a great practice week is automatic or maybe the, the seniors are kind of taking over and expecting there each week? Yeah, I think the standard has been set. You know, our job is to try to raise it, you know. So uh, this week it was let's have the best Tuesday we've had all year. Let's have the best Wednesday and so on. And just trying to do one thing better than you did the last time you had an opportunity. And that's kind of the mantra we have right now. It's it's all about being, you know, the 22 guys that are in the two deep on each side of the ball just being a little bit better each day of the week that they go out there. Rob? Yeah, Dave, how happy are you with the linebacker group? I think you got three guys and top 10 maybe in tackles, something like that. Yeah, no, it's a fun group to watch. You know, I think they feed off each other's energy. Uh, they're active. They understand the scheme. They're playing fast. Uh, and they're very talented, you know. So it's been fun watching that group this year. And, and um, I don't expect it to slow down, you know. I mean, the, the way these guys are playing, the way that they're they're picking things up right now, it's it's a lot of fun to see Peyton and Drake and Isaiah just feed off of each other. And then Levi, you know, what he's been doing on third down too. Mike Tober. Good afternoon, Coach. I'm not asking for your game plan here, but the last two opponents, UNC has – um, shown they've given up quite a few rushing yards to quarterbacks in terms of uh, Virginia Tech as well as Florida State. We saw Bailey run a little bit and have success in that game against Wake Forest. Is that something you might look to exploit this weekend? Uh, we'll just have to see on Saturday. I mean, we definitely need to be able to run the ball to help Bailey. Um, and I think the run game is a big part of his success being in there just because the play actions and the nakeds and you know, the, the full protections you can do with downfield play action, all that stuff's better when you're able to run the football. You know, whether it's a tailback run or a quarterback run uh, or a receiver run with some of our Jets that we do, you know, we've got to be able to run the football in this game. Aaron Beard. Hey, Dave, was looking at the numbers during the winning streak. You guys are allowing, I think it was 101 yards rushing for over the three games. I'm curious, what do you think you guys are doing the best in terms of stopping the run during that stretch? Uh, you know, I think stopping the run is a collective thing, Aaron. It's um, the way that college football is now with so many perimeter plays. It always starts inside out, your nose guard. And we're getting very good nose guard play. And then it goes to the leverage, the edges of your defense. And we've been sound uh, in those areas for the most part. You know, and then it's pursuing the football. And I think all of it just kind of ties together. If you're soft in the middle, then you got no chance. You know, if you don't leverage the ball, your pursuit doesn't matter. And so I think our guys just understand, you know, kind of the 11-man approach we're taking and whose job it is to do what. And then just be a, you know, a guy that's not going to be blocked by a single person and get extra people there. Mark Armstrong. Uh, Dave, I'm putting together a story on Peyton for tomorrow, and I was wondering if there's any moments in his recruitment oh, yeah. that you can share where you realized the pendulum had swung away from Chapel Hill and you guys were, you know, definitely yeah. either in the mix or you were going to get him. Yeah, I mean, there was a night that I was going to – me and Coach Huxtable were going to see him play. And uh, that same afternoon, we found out that the UNC staff was going to be flying in there in a helicopter. And um, so I just called Peyton's um, coach and AD and said, hey, just so you know, we're coming in a pickup truck and country music's playing on the radio. I heard they're bringing in a helicopter. I hope you know that we're real and – you know, this is a better place for him. And uh, the AD called me back and just thanked me uh, for not creating all the stuff that got created over there for them having to find a field for them to land a helicopter in. And, <laughs> you know, I just kind of felt like it put us in a place that made us more like them um, as a family. And um, I think I had Hank Williams Jr. on the radio when I was talking to him, so we were laughing about that. 
Thank you for choosing that moment because I have actually a video of that. So that is perfect. <laughs> uh, and then uh, just one follow up. He, he's kind of got that man versus boys vibe about him where he's just, uh, I don't know, he just exudes like he's a different animal. Uh, can you speak to that a little bit? He's a throwback, you know. Uh, he's definitely like Jack Lambert and that old school linebacker that's just a vicious player, you know. He plays extremely hard. Um, I think he's learned how much he loves football by losing football with his injuries. And uh, he actually plays that way, you know, that – He's going to give it everything because he knows how precious it is, uh, precious it is to him. So, you know, I just think there's few guys out there that play as hard as he physically plays the game. He's relentless. Thank you. Yep. Jonas. Coach, you said all um, early in the year that you guys will always need both of your quarterbacks to be elite. Obviously, uh, Bailey's the guy, but has this been a crash course for Ben – Mm -hmm. to get to that elite level in a short amount of days. How's he look being the number two? Yeah, no, I mean, you know, during training camp when we lost Devin uh, to the contact tracing thing, you all are aware of that. We, we were able to soak Ben and uh, Bailey at that time. And, and Ben's done a really good job understanding the offense. We do developmental practice every Friday where he gets to, you know, run our skellies. And, and so he hasn't really um, looked like a guy that hasn't practiced. He's had a very good week. He's ready to play if called upon, and, and uh, I think he's done a, a really good job of preparing himself for this moment when it comes. Aaron? Hey, this is a little bit of a bigger picture question beyond this game. Um, there's been more focus from the ACC level, but also across the country on mental health. Um, you know, in the old days, it was you'd, maybe an athlete saw a sports psychologist because they were having the yips on kicks or something, but – how, how different is that part of it in terms of addressing mental health with your players and maybe erasing the stigma of seeing someone just to cope with anything going on, not just like a sports performance issue? No, I think it's probably one of the biggest changes in sports in the last five years. Um, not just the availability to get help for the guys, but from test anxiety to performance anxiety uh, to the things that, you know, death in the family, all the things that happen, but there's a lot of pressure on these kids and sometimes they don't handle it well. And, you know, sometimes it's internal pressure. Sometimes it's external pressure that gets them, but it's definitely addressed the, our sports psychology team in a normal year would be at practice once a week. They'd be around the building all the time. Obviously now everything is kind of zoom um, when it comes to that, but they're very accessible and they've really helped a lot of our players. Uh, and, and again, it's not looked at as, a crutch or a weakness. It's looked at as a resource here. Thank you. Rob. How big of a threat is Carolina's receiving core? And is is a worry uh, offense, or pardon me, defensively for Carolina, is, is a worry that maybe broken plays could be some of their bigger plays? Yeah, I mean, I think when I watch them, first of all, they're very skilled. Uh, running back, wide out, tight end, quarterback. Uh, the biggest thing you see this year, a quarterback, um, Sam gets out of trouble and extends plays, not by running down the field, but letting his receivers get open as he scrambles. And, and there's a lot of explosive plays that way in their offense. You know, I mean, you've got to tackle their quick game, tackle their hitches, tackle their screens and all that. That's every week. But he is really, really good at getting out of trouble and extending plays. And, and we've got to be disciplined one, and keeping them in the pocket, but two, staying on our guys in coverage. Jonas, you have another one? I do. Um, coach, I, I don't think that every coach is, is superstitious, but I don't know too many athletes or coaches who don't have a, a routine. Uh, considering you're, you're 3-0 and at, at Keenan, do you have a pre-game, a pre-Keenan routine that's been working for you? No, I don't change anything. Um, you know, uh, every game's pretty much the same for me. It's been great there. Obviously, I'd love to continue it, but we're going to have to earn it. Does anything, anybody have anything else? All right, y'all right. have a good one. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Annabelle. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it.